Hello, and welcome to episode 15 of the Summer Knits podcast. Today, I'm going to do something slightly different and share my Make 9 for 2022. I actually didn't expect to get to record today, so um, I've gathered everything up really quickly, and I hope to not rush through it too much. Um, I just didn't expect to have the house to myself. I do have a very needy dog with me today. Um, his name is Riley, and he is a rather elderly pug chihuahua that does not want to be on his own right now. So he will be joining us and hopefully not getting in the way too much. Um, as always, if you enjoy the video, please like and um, subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos but your likes and your comments mean absolutely the world to me. I started this podcast in order to be part of the greater knitting community throughout the world, and I really feel like I've been able to do that, and I've formed some amazing connections through doing this. Um, and I really enjoy it because I don't currently have an in-person knitting group or an outlet for really just talking about all the things that are exciting me right now. Um, so I'm going to explain my Make 9 is um, specifically focused on sweaters for which I already have the yarn. Um, stop, please. So I will do probably a separate warm weather Make 9 in the spring and do the same thing. Try to focus on items for which I already have the supplies because I'd like to be a bit more intentional about using my stash and about the way I shop. So I have been better about buying sweater quantities since those are the things that really excite me right now and I just I want to use those sweater quantities for the things that I bought them for, the reasons that I was inspired. So I'm going to try to do that throughout this year starting with cold weather wardrobe. So I posted my Make 9 on Instagram, if you follow me over there, at Summer Knits. But I'm going to go through it one piece at a time. If you do follow me, or if you've seen the previous episode, you know that I started my Make 9 on January 1st. So I already finished and showed on the last podcast the Tulip Gansey by Midori Hirose. So I wore it on the last podcast, and you can see the fit there and on Instagram but it is a cabled um, upper panel and back with these beautiful tulip cables that was a new one for me. Um, and then a stockinette body and a long ribbing at the bottom and then stockinette sleeves with ribbing at the cuffs. It's a little bit folded, uh, wrinkled because it's been folded in my closet. Sorry for covering my mouth so much. I know that makes it difficult for some people. Um, but I really didn't like my last video, partially because of how far I was from the camera and partially because I just, I hate the paint color in my craft room and I always feel like the videos that I do in there come out so blah. Um, so apologies. I'm going to try and be a little more, a little closer to the camera, um, but hopefully I don't cover my face too much. But anyway, so the first of my Make 9 is done. The Tulip Gansey by Midori Hirose. And I thoroughly enjoyed that pattern and absolutely recommend it to anyone who's looking to make that type of jumper. I used a 500 gram hank from Wooly Knit. I made um, the medium, which is the third size, I believe. And I had 62 grams left over of the yarn. And it's just a DK weight, 100% wool, non-super wash, nothing added to it. Um, uh, it was a merino, so it was a merino hank, and the color was ice blue. And Wooly Knit is a very affordable wool um, before the overseas shipping, at least for me. So if you are in the UK, it's very affordable because I think you get free shipping over 65 pounds, but um, it, it did cost a little bit more because of the overseas shipping, but it was absolutely amazing to work with, and I am very glad that I hopped on that Black Friday sale. So the next item up is actually not in the original Make 9 grid that I posted because originally I posted the grid with 
the Bean and Olive sweater. So this is an Andrea Mowry pattern and it comes in both a child and adult. And it is still a goal of mine to make matching Bean and Olive sweaters for me and my daughter. Um, she's 10 and still thinks that it's awesome to match with mom. So I still want to do that, but since I wanted to focus on sweaters for which I already have the yarn, um, that did not qualify because we have talked about color choices and just because of kid wear and tear on sweaters, I will probably try and go with a more affordable choice, um, probably in a superwash for her at least. So I'm thinking about Knit Picks Swish, um, and she would like a dark purple sweater with a lighter contrasting of the heart motif. And I thought I might um, do mine similarly or with gray, like one of the example photos is with maybe a, um, a variegated or a multicolor yarn for the heart motif. So I am still excited about that one, but if I have to kick it off of my Make 9 because it is not something for which I already have the yarn, I want to replace it with something that's been on my list for a very long time and is now on my needles. And I have started the um, No Frills Sweater by Petite Knit. Um, it is a very popular pattern on Ravelry. Sorry, covering my mouth again. Very popular pattern on Ravelry. Um, it is a basic raglan pullover and it uses a strand of fingering weight and a strand of, I think, usually mohair. But I am using, sorry, um, all the bending and the moving. I am using another woolly knit. Um, this time it's a cone and it is the British wool um, in Aran. It is 500 grams um, of pure British wool and the color is Aran. It's just this creamy natural. And then I'm using a Surrey alpaca hand dyed by um, Pancake and Lulu in the color Violet Icing. Um, and I have four skeins of this. I don't know if I will need all four, but I have four skeins of this and it's beautiful. And I have that whole cone and I'm getting such a lovely fabric from it. It's not on big enough needles to really spread the whole yoke out. I am almost done with the yoke increases and I, I'm close to splitting for the sleeves, but I think it's still another 20 rounds or something and it it grows every other round so it it does take me a little while now to get around but it's just basic raglan and it's making this really pretty it's not showing up as purple on camera as it is I'm gonna try and I don't know if you can see how purple um it's it's almost like an optical illusion, but it is, it's this purple halo around the cream yarn, and it's just making for a really pretty fabric. Um, and I know, like I said, it's not showing up as purple on camera as it really is in person, but I'm excited for this. Every once in a while, I get a little bit of cast on regret, and I'm like, I should have done like a textured yoke or something more interesting. But I think with the fabric I'm getting, I'm gonna, it's gonna be just a, a wonderful wardrobe staple. Um, and I, I know I'm gonna love the finished product, or at least I think I will. And I talked to a few different people, um, like Rebecca from the Crab Bea podcast, who have made them and say they wear their no frill sweaters all the time. And I think like Taylor from um, Taylor Seeking Cozy, the dyer behind Fiber for the People, says the no frill sweater is like a labor of love. It's going to take a while because it is a lot of stitches and a lot of stockinette, and sometimes it can be really hard to keep your motivation for that. But I think the finished product is absolutely going to be worth it. So the Bean and Olive Square on my Make 9 has been replaced by the No Frills Sweater by Petite Knit. 
and Petite Knit has a lot of amazing staple pieces and I have some other things of hers on my want to make list but that I haven't necessarily settled on yarn choices for. I would really like to make myself an anchor sweater like I made my daughter but um, I want it to be in something really luxurious feeling and I just haven't decided what yet. I really love the mohair silk by Nature's Luxury and I've considered splurging on that and I haven't decided what the other yarn to hold with it would be. The last sweater that I made with Nature's Luxury was um, The Weekender by Andrea Mowry and I held the, oh, the sport weight that's really luxurious. Um, I can't remember, sorry, with their silk mohair and it is so soft and so warm and, and I love that sweater. It does have to be fairly chilly for me to wear it because it is a very warm sweater. Um, but because that was a sport weight, I can't use the same yarn. I need a fingering weight. Um, so I haven't decided what yet, but that is on my list. But back to my make nine. Let's see, what's the next one I can reach easily? Um, I tried to grab any patterns I had already printed out so that I could show photos. Um, sorry, they're black and white. The next one um, that I'm going to talk about is Evenfall, which is also an Andrea Mallory pattern. Um, and I believe it uses slip stitches to do the color work design. But there is a background color and then two contrasting colors. So my main color is this yellow, um, and I know I've shown it before, I showed it when the order showed up, but it is Fiber for the People Merino Singles. Um, and I know I mentioned on that other podcast that they're labeled as Superwash Merino, but I did check in with Taylor. They're just mislabeled. They are actually the Organic Merino Singles, so they are non-Superwash. And then the first contrasting color is um, or the main contrasting color is Moon, which is this gray. And then the pop of contrasting color is Bada, which is this blue. So all together, this will be my Evenfall by Andrea Mowry. And I almost cast this on instead of the no frill sweater, but if I can power through that no frill sweater, then I'll have it for like, winter time, not really vacationing necessarily, but like winter outings, and it's going to be a really warm sweater. This even fall, I think it's going to be more of an office sweater for me, although it does seem like it'll be fairly warm because of the yarn, but because it's a thinner yarn, it's, it's going to be a dressier, like classier sweater, I guess. I don't know. Um, and if you can see, there is a pico edging at the neckline and it's just it's got a dressy quality to it there's um pico at the cuffs and and so i'm excited to have that and i've been wanting to make myself a yellow sweater for a long time if you've been here a while you may know that i also have another yellow sweater planned and i'm looking at um doing a short sleeve so that's why it's not on this make nine but i was thinking about um Oh, it's a T by Along Along uh, ugh, I can't talk today. Along Avec and Anna. Okay, one of these days my mouth is gonna start working correctly. Maybe I need a drink. I have a not fancy teacup today because I was out doing the grocery shopping this morning. Um, I have a full day of cooking today. I need to take dinner to a family friend. Um, that they had a death in the family and so I'm making dinner for everyone and then I'm also contributing to the funeral meal tomorrow so a full day of cooking but I decided to take some time out to film when I realized I would have the whole house to myself and the house is mostly clean okay that's an exaggeration the kids area is not clean but the downstairs where I want it to be clean is mostly clean. So the next, move things so I can see. The next one um, that I'm gonna talk about is another fiber for the people 
um, custom order. And I had been going back and forth between the Chloe sweater and stripes, which is another Andrea Mowry pattern. And I was wearing the stripes sweater that I made last year. And then I tried on another sweater that I had done that was a raglan. The stripes sweater is a round yoke pattern and the Chloe sweater is a raglan. And the more I looked at it, the more I think the striped sweater is gonna fit my body and be what I want it to be more than the Chloe. But what drew me to the Chloe was the stripe patterning. So I think I may pay for the Chloe. I've already got the stripes. I may steal the stripe pattern from the Chloe and use it with, so the, the like, row count for the stripe pattern and use it with the actual sweater pattern for the striped sweater. What I can't decide is what my collar, cuffs, and bottom hem color should be. So I'm kind of leaning towards the darker, um, which is called compote. And this is a hemp two-ply sport weight, um, sorry, merino hemp. So it's 75% organic merino, 30% hemp, two-ply sport weight. You get 328 yards to 100 grams. So compote is like, it's looking navy on the screen, but it almost has a hint of purple in it in person, which you probably can't tell because of the bluey purpley jumper that I have on. Um, but then there's also winter, which is this, lighter mid-tone blue, bougainvillea, which is this like lovely bright pink, and then there is teal me away, and the one neutral that I got was fleece, and it's kind of a, it's kind of a cool brown but I don't think it's what I want right up on my neckline. I like the teal right up on my neck, but I kind of feel like the, the compote makes for a really nice accent because it is the darkest color at the neckline and um, the cuffs and the bottom edge. And it would be used for other stripes throughout as well, but I kind of like the idea of having that darker color as the edging, um, if you want to say. So if you have thoughts on that, feel free to drop them in the comments. But this would be basically a second stripe sweater with the Chloe stripes um, row counts. And, and I don't know if that would work out exactly. I'll have to do some math and I'll really have to sit down and plan it all out. I was going to count the stripes um, that I did on my original striped sweater because I love the fit, except that the collar has grown. So um, I would like to do a 2021 year in review video, and I thought about doing that today, but that'll be a lot of changing clothes um, and may take a bit longer. But my striped sweater, I did do the looser neckline because she offers two necklines in the pattern. Um, and I may do the tighter one this time because my looser neckline has really, it's gone out far enough that when I wear it, I have to be very careful of where my bra straps sit and I don't want it to be quite that loose. So my choices are either still do the looser neckline, but go down an additional needle size or do the tighter neckline, but not like super tight, not as tight as this neckline so that it's still a little open but not as open because I think it sits out here now and I would like it to sit more like here. Um, so, and I know that if you do an after the fact neck instead of um, casting on the neckline and doing the ribbing right away, that it's easy to rip back and change your stitch count and really customize that. And I, I think that that's probably how the tighter neckline is done. I didn't read through that part because I knew I wanted the looser neckline last time. But that is Stripes by Andrea Mowry. Um, and I would be doing the full length, I think. Um, 
and I haven't decided on sleeve length. I do, I did do full length or bracelet length sleeves on my last one, and she does give an option between that and the um, the three quarter length sleeves in the pattern. So it might depend on how it's how it's feeling as I try it on. I did that sweater where I did the body and the sleeve simultaneously because I was using all different yarns and I wanted to make sure that I had enough for the stripes on the sleeves to line up with the body. And I loved doing that because as soon as the body was done and that bottom ribbing cast off, all I had was ribbing on the sleeves and everything was done and I just had to weave in ends. So I think that I would do that again. I would cast on and get down to where you separate for sleeves and once I separate for sleeves, then I was using interchangeable needles and I put one cord on one sleeve and one cord on the other sleeve and I just moved the needle tips. So I would do the stripes in the body or the stripe of that color. And then I would take that same color and immediately do the stripe on one arm and the stripe on the other arm and then pick the next body color because I was kind of picking randomly. Um, I didn't have like a stripe plan. This time I'm gonna sit down and have it kind of outlined but also since I only have one skein of each color, I'll need to pay attention to that and make sure that it ends up working out mathematically. Um, and I think the safest way to do that is still to do the sleeves at the same time that I do the body. Um, since we're still on Andrea Mowry patterns, let's finish the Andrea Mowry patterns with the Shifty. So this has been on my list for a while, and I almost cast it on this fall, except in her Ravelry group, I saw a test call where she asked um, for people in certain size ranges to do a test knit of a reboot of the Shifty in order to get the increases to work out better on all the other sizes. So if you've heard other reviews of the Shifty, or if you watch Knitting Traditions and you saw her talk about it, the increases for the size two are fairly even, and that's the size that Andrea wears and knits most of her samples in. Um, and the reviews are that the, the increases and stitch counts and things for the other sizes are just a little bit, not really off, but um, slightly harder to to deal with, I don't know. Um, I have not knit this pattern, so I can't speak to that for certain, but I can just say that I've heard that they're not quite as even across and that there's a little more finagling on the stitch counts in the other sizes, and I would like to knit the size three. So um, I am kind of holding, waiting for Andrea to release the reboot of the Shifty, um, hoping that that has fixed whatever issues there are with the increases, in which case I'll have to reprint the pattern, but that's fine. Um, I'm, I'm hoping, since it's a pattern I've already purchased, that she's just doing an update and that it will be released to everyone who's already purchased the pattern. Um, but we'll see. But let me show you the yarn that I have for that. And I've talked about it before, but my main color is not actually... Um, a color changing yarn like the spin cycle. It is actually Gusto, um, which is a superwash merino, um, and the color is gray day. And I have I have lots of this because I found it half price um, last year, last Christmas maybe. Um, so Christmas of 2020. Anyway, I have lots and lots of this Gusto. I didn't even get it all out that I have. So I brought four skeins down, but I have plenty. Um, and it is a super, super, super pale gray. And then my Spin Cycle yarns, and I forget how many it actually calls for, but I'm just going to change it as I feel like it. Um, I have, and these are all dyed in the wool. So this one is the saddest place, which has like aquas and purples. And then this one is also the saddest place, but has more gray. And this one has more purple. So you can see that they are a bit different. Um, the one with gray has a lot more of the bright turquoise in it. And then the other one has lots more of the deeper purple pops 
and almost the light pinky purple pops in it. So, um, and then the other ones are Bruised Ego, which is darker blues and purples and charcoal -y grays. Um, up close, there's a little bit of like light pinky colors. And then the last one is Melancholia. And it is all like, and it, it's still a dyed in the wool, so it's not the nocturne base, but it is all like deep turquoise with like tiny bits of dark purple in it. I don't even know if it's going to read well on the screen, but, um, and I haven't decided what order yet, but I'm going to pair these lovely color changing yarns with this super neutral. And obviously I'm going to swatch it first and make sure that I love the fabric I'm getting, because if not, I'll get a different background color because this, this gusto could make all kinds of amazing sweaters. In fact, it's so soft that it could be an anchor sweater without having to hold anything with it, I think. Um, and it's just so squishy. But also I have a ton of textured yoke pullovers in DK weight on my um, Ravelry queue. But the other thing about the DK weight Gusto, and I haven't swatched it yet, it feels so much thinner than most DK weight yarns. Like, and even when I went in to buy it, the lady was like, it knits more like a sport weight, but oh my God, it looks more like a fingering weight. I mean, a lot. Um, so let's see. This merino hemp is a sport weight. And the gusto is supposed to be a DK weight. Maybe it blooms. I don't know. Maybe it's just that it's so soft. They think you should knit it at a loose enough gauge to maintain the amazing softness. But it is 330 yards to 100 grams. And this sport weight is 328 yards to 100 grams. So... I really feel like this should be labeled as a sport weight, but we're going to swatch it up and see. But I really think that that will be a beautiful shifty sweater. Um, now for things I don't have printouts of the pictures. Back to petite knit patterns. I bought on sale, of course, because who can resist a good sale? Um, I actually have four hanks of this lace weight. And it is so pretty and so vibrant. And I just think it looks really good um, with my skin, even when my hair is a different color. Because I bought it back when my hair was probably still just blonde. Um, but it is a gorgeous, vibrant blue. And blue is one of my favorite colors. I hear a lot of knitters say that they don't really like blue, which I find interesting. But... Um, this is Shimmer Lace Weight from Knit Picks, which is 70% um, baby alpaca and 30% silk. And I am wanting to do the Cumulus um, blouse sweater, whatever she calls it, uh, by Petite Knit. And instead of doing mohair, I want to do this baby alpaca and silk um, combo. And so I'm just gonna stick with this beautiful blue. I have plenty of it. I'm not gonna need all this. But um, I am gonna swatch it up first and make sure that I love the drape of the fabric. I feel like I really will. Um, and then it'll be a luxurious and beautiful office sweater for me to wear to work. Um, and it is so soft. This is like definitely next to skin soft. It's amazing. Um, I have done another sweater using this but in a hot pink and held with a hot pink uh, mohair, the Aloft by Knit Picks. And if I can get to my 2021 year in review, I will feature that sweater as well um, and the things I want to do to alter it. But I do love the drape and the feel 
of this yarn. So I'm thinking held double for the cumulus, it's going to be amazing. Because the cumulus doesn't really need structure. It, um, it won't matter that the alpaca is just all draped. So I'm excited about that one. It's been on my list a long time to make. And then when I got this yarn, I was like, that's it. So um, that is the next to, no, I still have like three more. I don't even know where I am in my make nine. Anyway, um, I have talked about it before, but, and recently at that, I am also planning the, I'm going to crinkle just for a minute. So that order I got recently from Pancake and Lulu, she's a hand dyer. Um, you can find her on Etsy or I think she has her own website. Um, Periwinkle in Time is the main color and it is a silk single fingering so it is 70% superwash merino 30% silk 100 grams is 438 yards and it's gorgeous and I'm gonna crinkle again and I'm sorry and the color I'm holding it with is also the periwinkle in time so it is the same color just on a different base and these smell really good because I've had lavender sachets stuffed in with all of them but this is the Surrey Alpaca Silk, and this is the Silk Merino, and they are going to be held together for a rainy day sweater, which has gorgeous texture in the yoke and at the hem, and just looks like a super soft and luxurious sweater. It actually calls for two strands of mohair and a strand of fingering but I'm going to swatch it with just the Surrey and the fingering because Surrey can be slightly, even though it's still classified um, as a lace weight usually, it can be thicker, a lot thicker actually sometimes than um, mohair. So I'm going to swatch it up and see if I just I can get gauge and love the fabric. If not, like I said, there are so many textured yoke sweaters on my queue. Um, there's like one called, I want to say like Fairy Bouquet or Fairy Garden. Um, there's the Midori Pullover. Actually, um, I, it's kind of funny because Knitting Traditions posted in her stories today on Instagram and like five of the patterns she posted are ones I had queued recently of textured yoke pullovers. And a lot of them are a fingering weight with a well they're supposed to be with kid silk mohair but um I just I love the feel of Surrey alpaca so much more so this will be a luxurious but a luxurious textured yoke sweater of some sort but the rainy day pullover is my plan um if it doesn't swatch up well and it's not meant to be then that happens but I'm just so excited about this and about um periwinkle being the pantone color of the year because I adore that shade of purple and I'm very excited about seeing all of the hand dyers making versions, their own versions of the Periwinkle now and I'm really excited to see it kind of flood the market. So a purple phase for me, but that is okay. Um, Oh, I guess I left out an Andrea Mallory pattern when we were in that section of my Make 9 because I can see it sitting back here. Um, the Pink Fizz, which I know I've printed out, but I guess I don't have down here with me. Um, I have, I was at a fiber festival last summer and you might have seen that episode and I picked out this Show Me Yarns. Um, in their Queen City base, which is a fingering weight, and I don't know if you can see it, but it has super, super subtle Stellina sparkle in it. Like, so subtle. Um, and it doesn't even matter to me if that ends up showing. What mattered to me was this color, and I just, I'm just loving this color. But across the way from that was a chick that knits. And at their booth, I got their Surrey Silk Cloud, which is 74% baby Surrey alpaca. 
and 26% mulberry silk. And they have done a sample of the Pink Fizz in their Surrey silk, I believe is what she told me. Um, but it is like slightly lighter or hits on the lighter side of what's in the Show Me yarns. And the Show Me yarns, she said the colorway was mislabeled. It says Osage Beach, but she said that it's actually mislabeled and she wasn't sure the colorway name. Um, so it's, let's see if the colorway is I think the colorway name is Tammy, if that's, I mean, that's all it says on here. I don't know. Anyway, um, these are going to go together and, <laughs> and become a pink fizz that is definitely not pink. Um, but I, I really like that pattern. It looks super relaxed, but like just fancy enough. It can be home, it can be office, it can be anywhere. It also looks like it'll just feel like a hug to put on. So um, that's been in my queue for a while and I'm very excited and I've already bought the pattern. Um, so there's that and then, the, goodness, it's like half Andrea Mallory patterns, um, you know, and even worse because I replaced the Chloe, but that's okay. Um, I am also still working on, and it went ahead in my Make 9 because I only had a few rows done. Um, the Straya cardigan and I'm taking my time on it because I really think that the point in time I'm going to want it is going to be late spring um, or sorry I just jostled the, the camera um, or close to Easter but we'll see how I can progress on it I'm not going to like kill myself to get it done because it is um, half fisherman's rib on size two needles. So very tiny. Um, it is 50 rows to four inches. So growth is slow. Um, I have made it through four of my stripe colors so far. And I know I showed on the last podcast that the fifth stripe color is this purple. And that's why I think it's going to be fabulous for Easter. And for that late springtime where the bright, pretty colors are all the things I want to wear. And it's going to be a lightweight cardigan um, with a, I'm hoping, a slightly loose fit so that it can go over, um, like I can wear it to work and just throw it on when I need just an extra little bit. But I decided to focus for now on the cold, cold weather things that I can wear immediately. And I know some different podcasters have talked about like knitting the cold things in the warm months so that they're there when you're ready to wear them when it's cold and then knitting the warm things in the cold months so that when it gets warm, they're ready and you can wear them the whole season. And um, I have a hard time with that because I did a test knit, um, not this past summer, but the summer before for a sweater that finished in August. And of course it was a... Um, longish sleeve sweater it was fingering weight so it was light but like I couldn't have it on for long enough to take pictures without starting to sweat because of how hot it gets here and a lot of times I want to wear the things I make like immediately like I want to wear it now as soon as I can pull it off the blocking mats it's going on my body so um I'm just, I'm just going with what motivates me right now, and it's hard for me to stay motivated for something I can't wear right away. So I am sticking with the cold weather knits for now. Um, I think that completed my entire Make 9. I'm going to check my grid really fast. Um, so we covered the Cumulus Blouse in the Knit Picks, Pink Fizz in the Turquoise, the Straya cardigan in the Easter Peeps colors, um, my plans for the bean and olive matching sweaters, the Shifty, Evenfall, Rainy Day sweater, um, and I guess I didn't tell you who that one's by. The Rainy Day sweater is by, um, oh, I'm just, 
I'm going to put it in at the bottom because I don't want to mispronounce her name because I would feel really bad. Um, but let me see if I can show you a picture of the sweater really quickly if the screens don't get weird about that. Oh, it's just going to blow out, isn't it? I'll try and insert a picture if I can figure that out because you're, gonna, you're missing all the texture up in the yoke and at the bottom. Um, it, it's just a beautiful sweater and I'm excited about it. Um, and the tulip Gansey and then my plans for the Chloe slash stripes sweater. Um, and part of that Chloe stripes decision, I'm not going to make until I get the, um, no frill sweater off my needles. I think, I don't know. I might end up if I, if I go crazy on the just miles of stockinette on the no frills, I may end up swatching for the next one, but I'm going to try to stick with something in my make nine, um, which is hard when I browse my patterns on Ravelry or new releases, or I see new amazing things on Instagram. But like I said, I have the yarn for these sweaters and the intention to make them. So why not just make them and make them a part of my wardrobe and then I can enjoy them and then move on to the next exciting thing. So that's what I'm going to try and do for now. Um, I would love to know what's in your make nine or what is in your goals for the year, or if you're going to do a maker's dozen or a knitting bingo. I've heard um, that some people do that and I've seen different challenges around I need to go through my groups on Ravelry and see who's doing what kind of challenge. Curious Handmade had a 20 for 21 last year, and I want to see if she's put out a 20 for 22 because there were some challenges and things to try in there. Um, and while I won't, like, not make something because it's not on a list, um, maybe the list will help me focus on things that I've already decided could be wardrobe staples for me, things I've already picked out yarn for and basically said my intention is to make and have this garment. And knowing that I will interrupt that to make things for my kids. Um, and one of my goals for 2022 is to make my husband a sweater. And that makes me very nervous. Um, why does that make me nervous? Not because of the sweater curse. That's that's not it. Um, when we were dating, maybe, and we started dating in 2008, and we've been married since 2010, so plenty of time that I can make him a sweater. Um, it makes me nervous because I want it to be something really lovely that he can appreciate and... I do not think that he's going to want something rustic or toothy. Um, I think something soft and drapey, but still structured well enough to suit his body um, would be good. I've been watching what Jonathan from Jonathan's Days, work, uh, what he wears and what works for him and how he talks about the fit of sweaters because they have very similar body types. They're almost exactly the same height and build-wise look pretty similar. Um, I've got to find a sneaky way to get my husband's chest circumference. And there is not a really stealthy way to measure somebody. Not like that, anyway. Um, so I need to do that to see what size he would fit in. But I am considering starting with something super easy, like the anchor sweater, my boyfriend's size, um, or um, going with something textured but beautiful, like the single malt. I'm very much drawn to that pattern as well. So part of it is going to be happening upon just the right yarn and going from there, or shopping with intention for just the right yarn because it needs to be something, I think, in a solid, like, or a kettle dyed in a gray or um, like a chocolatey brown or something. 
he has dark hair and hazel eyes and it needs to be something that will really suit him. Um, and then I'm going to have to put in the sneaky time to do that. And since he doesn't work evenings most of the time anymore, that sneaky time is harder to find. So, but that's a, it's a 2022 goal and it may not happen till the fall. Um, or it might be something that I start and I have to work on a little bit at a time to really get it done. Maybe even by next Christmas, but we'll see. Um, Anyway, thank you for joining me. This went a little bit longer than I had planned on, but hopefully that's okay. Um, I really do want to hear from you what you're making, what your goals are for this year, um, or even if you just have vague notions instead of goals or make nines or whatever, just a, a concept, and I really want to. So throw that down in the comments, um, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Hopefully I can get to that. 2021 year in review sometime. But anyway, I'm going to get going. Lots of cooking to do.